the most important thing for mathematicians to know about women, don't let them distract you from math. Math must be in, in uh, place number one. At just 10 years old, he scored an astonishing 160 on the Mensa IQ test in the field of the International Mathematical Olympiads where genius is just your entry ticket and brilliance is the baseline, Theodore stands out. He became the best in the history of IMO in 2012. But how does he do it? Is it possible to think like a math champion and outsmart the toughest problems? Stick around as we decode the secrets of becoming a world-class math lead. At first you work problems. When you don't know how to solve a problem, you read the solution of problem and then you need you have to notice two, two things. Either you have, I could have solved this problem, but I was just too quick to look at the solutions and then you punish yourself. I mean, you just feel bad, that's the punishment. Or you see a method, a theorem, uh, an approach that you're not used to and then you don't feel bad because, okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to solve it no matter how much time I invested in this. So you just read that approach you learn something new and then you go on but once you start approaching enough problems that every time you look at the solution you, you see wait a second i could have solved this i just needed to invest more time then start investing more time because you're not going to progress if, you, if this keeps happening to you that means you've already you've seen enough approaches you see enough theory just uh just need to work on your imagination and uh perseverance all but mo mostly by myself, books, and also some tutors, which they kind of just uh, imitated what other kids would learn in school, but on a more individual level, because I was not capable of. Of course, sometime, some some period, my parents did, my mother did that herself, but at some point, when uh, the level became too much for her, she hired other people to do that work, and it worked just fine. I do not like looking at solutions if I struggle with a problem. Uh, before, before when I was a competitor, I would maybe give a problem a couple of days, maybe weeks. Of course, not constantly working on it with, with pauses. Sometimes I would randomly just uh, not even do that problem, but I would randomly think of a solution or read the theory and remember the problem. Oh yeah, this could work with that problem and then I solve it. But I, I would read the solution eventually because I was more... Um, trying to be time efficient. Now I'm just trying to not be time efficient as much as just enjoy problems and that includes not reading solutions. Because if you read the solution, you can never really solve the problem. But you learn in it, right? Well, you learn it also if you solve it yourself. For me now, I'm not a competitor, I, for my own enjoyment, I don't look at solutions because it's like a feeling of pride if you manage to solve it yourself or a feeling of shame if you have to look at the solution. But uh, no, for, for IMO competitors, they uh, try to be time efficient, so you do look at the solutions eventually. However, it's important to find the balance. People who take too long, too long to work on the same problem, they, um, you can say, their progress is stalled by struggling with a problem that may not be on, that may, may be outside of their level. Maybe they simply are not equipped with the appropriate tool, appropriate theorem or theory and simply stop it. Stop struggling. Learn the new theory, read the solution, see which theory was used, go read a, a, a paper on that theory and stop. you can do that in a couple of hours instead of uh, struggling with it for days. Time efficiency is important. Well, I was raised by my mother, and uh, at some point when I was small, she kind of tried to test which talents I possess. She did not in any way prefer math, actually her preference was uh, music and languages. However, she did, in general, test stuff and noticed that I'm really good at numbers. I think I definitely preferred numbers. That was age maybe four, five, four, four. I mean, yeah, sure, just give a small kid numbers, see if he can add, subtract well, and yes, I was capable of adding and subtracting well. Hell, even by age 4 or 5, I was uh, capable of multiplying numbers really quickly, too. So it was uh, at that point that I, myself, wanted to work math more because it was the most fun thing. I did not want to play the piano, I did not want to learn other languages, except English, of course. But uh, math was fun, and I wanted to work a lot of it, so I... Uh, 
I developed a significant advantage in math. Basically, uh, at, at age four or five, I already knew what most seven, eight-year-olds knew. So I had a two, three-year advantage. While well, other people noticed that when I was really small, uh, I suppose my biggest jump in uh, talent and in, in, in results was when I was uh, seventh grade in elementary school. So that was um, 14 years old. When I was 14 years old, I uh, I competed against 17-year-olds, uh, and I passed every single level until I ended up competing for the team selection test, the, the Serbian Mathematical Olympiad, which is, the point is that's all high schoolers together, that means up to 19-year-olds, and that's when I barely managed to enter the IMO team, I was the sixth in the, the, the Serbian Mathematical Olympiad. I mean, they were shocked that I managed to do it. The most important thing for mathematicians to know about women, don't let them distract you from math. Math must be in, in uh, place number one. Make sure your woman, if you find one, knows that. Sorry, girlfriend, but I have to study math. I know you want to see that movie. Math comes first. How has your relationship been with women? Were they chasing you or were you chasing them? Well, 